Hey everybody, Quinn here from Tactical and Practical. Hope you're doing well. Um, today we're going to talk about Tesla Solar. I just had my system installed and going to walk you through the components of it, uh, how big our system is, what it's doing for us, how the installation went. Pretty much try to give it to you soup to nuts. Uh, we'll start with the handy app. Now I was going to try to show this to you on the computer but they don't have a desktop based uh, dashboard type interface. It's all done on your telephone and it's pretty cool. If you can see there greens energy coming in through the roof and then it shows you how it is distributed. Uh, currently we're generating 6.2 watts at uh, 8.30 in the morning my house is pull or eight point pardon me six point three kilowatts the house is pulling point nine kilowatts and then uh, five point three is going to the power wall setup uh, as that changes the little green dots change really a pretty handy device it tells you what your generation history is it shows you what your consumption is and where it's coming from really pretty slick they really have this thing dialed in all in all the experience has been pretty great I have to say uh, I got multiple bids from competing companies pretty much those bids were coming in almost double what Tesla quoted me one person was fairly close to the Tesla bid but that was with no batteries so basically what I did was try to figure out our annual consumption and then I designed our system to be slightly under that. For us, uh, out here, we are on propane heat. So in the winter, I should have a pretty significant surplus, um, which I can sell back based on my utility provider's policies. In the summer, I thought I might run a little bit under usage, but I could offset that with the credits that I generate in the winter time. Right now we've got it pretty well pegged. The best day that we had, and it was actually a little bit cloudy on that day, was 95% of the house was powered by our own system and 5% was powered by the grid. Um, hopefully today's going to be sunny, so that'll be a little different. Also, the the, the procedure is that you put in a deposit with Tesla. They do preliminary design. You can approve it or make changes. You start the process. They pull the permits. If you have an HOA, that's your responsibility. If you have a um, the ability like net metering, you need to reach out to your um, utility. As we did, I had to pay out of pocket to have the meter switched. It was about 500 bucks, which isn't included in your purchase price. And then uh, you hurry up and wait. The demand for this has been overwhelming. I placed this order uh, around, say, the Thanksgiving time, and it took six months on a waiting list, and then we got it done. It took two days. The installation was smooth. The crew was professional. I have a standing seam metal roof and uh, Tesla install crews utilize, I believe it's the S5 clamp, so you can install the panels on your roof without having to make any, um, without having to penetrate the roof at all. No drilling was required. I have some drone footage so you can see what the panels look like on the top, and then I can show you what the, um, the power walls look like on the side. For us, an important consideration was the ability to handle our heating and cooling requirements particularly because we are in Texas and it gets very hot. So you're going, if you care about running your air conditioner, you want to go to your air conditioning unit and look at the RLA. Uh, your, regardless of how many the amps or the watts that your air conditioner uses, if it has an RLA number, that means that the rotor is locked when it's in the off position and it requires a pretty significant spike in initial uh, amperage to unlock that rotor and get it to spin. I think I'm describing that correctly. I'm not an HVAC person. Uh, so for us to be able to run the air conditioner using our own power, I needed two power walls 
to be able to handle that initial load. There are a couple other solutions you can use to get you there. Basically, there's a large capacitor that will store a, start, store a charge and you can utilize that uh, as a startup mechanism or if your air conditioning unit does not have um, an RLA rating, if that spot is blank, that means you have a variable speed system and the variable speed systems don't have the rocking, locking rotors so you don't need to worry about it. But that's something to consider if you're deciding whether or not to get a power wall. Also of consideration is do you have the desire to be able to function off the grid? Last year in Texas we had this snowmageddon event. People were out of power for days. If you don't have storage, energy storage capabilities, when the grid goes down, you go down. For me, the idea of energy self-sufficiency also meant that I should have the opportunity to be able to operate in times when the grid is down. That meant we had to get a power wall. We got to, partly driven by the desire to be able to run our air conditioner, we have two power wall two pluses and 32 panels. That has been keeping up with our energy demand on this house. This house is 2,900 square feet, uh, is what I pay the tax assessor. The uh, appraiser called it 2,600 square feet, so there's some spaces they don't count, storage under the stairs or whatever, uh, and some of those are, are invented, but we've got a dual zone system. Uh, the upstairs, generally we keep pretty warm, it doesn't get used very much, so that thermostat is set to 78, maybe 80. The downstairs, which is the main living area and the larger space of the two, we keep that generally set at 75 degrees. And then at night, generally we set it about to 73 for sleeping. With the battery fully charged late in the day, uh, I found that the power walls will get us through until about 4 in the morning. And then um, I go on grid just until the sun comes up. And that's with the air conditioner running. When the air conditioner is running, it's pulling about five kilowatts. If I were to set our downstairs temperature from 73 to 75, 76, I could probably make it through the night, but currently I'm not worried about pulling 5% of my juice from the grid, particularly because during the day, my power walls are getting fully charged and then I'm generating excess power, which is then generating a small bit of income. Hopefully it's offsetting that on grid use. Next winter, we should have a significant surplus given that we're on propane heat. I can either utilize those credits to offset any deficiencies in the summer or our particular utility does allow me to cash them out. So if it gets to a couple hundred bucks, maybe I'll have them cut the check and that'll help offset the cost of the propane. So uh, there really isn't that much to it other than that. The Tesla crew does a really good job. I will say, and again, I don't think it's any shortcoming of their desire to provide customer service, but due to the fact that they are um, faced with overwhelming demand, it can be a little dodgy to get through to customer service. You have to just be very patient. Um, they will get you what you want and what you need um, in, in as a timely a fashion as they can. So. You put down your deposit, you think about what your energy needs are. This system with 32 panels and two power walls is designed to generate um, 14,000 kilowatts on an annual basis. I wanted it to be roughly what my offset is at the house. If I was a little under, I didn't mind because again, that propane discrepancy. However, I've been finding that I am exactly meeting my energy requirements. As a family, we don't pull a lot of power. Generally, five kilowatts is getting pulled if the dryer is on, if the dishwasher is on, uh, and obviously the air conditioner, which runs intermittently. The vast majority of the time, we are pulling 1.9 or one kilowatt, and that is running um, one, two, three, four fish tanks all the time, maybe one interior light, there's usually the, internet is always plugged in. Usually there is a device or two charging, the television is on, and a computer is on. That gets us to about one kilowatt, and that's what we're generally 
um, pulling. You can get your uh, electricity bill and look at it, multiply it times 12, or think about your seasonal variation and take an average. Um, but however you want to do it, uh, for us, 2,900 square foot house, 32 panels and two power wall plus two, two power wall two pluses. In the summer, and this is the hottest time of year for us, we're basically exactly meeting our energy needs. If you have a heated swimming pool or some other really large thing, those numbers are obviously going to be different for you. Um, but for us, that's that was about the perfect fit. I, I thought we were going to be a little under, and I've been pleasantly surprised to see that we're right on track. Also, you're going to want to consider that there is a tax incentive that is set to expire. I think of our purchase price, we are going to get 26% back on a federal tax credit. Uh, next year, that's going to drop to either, I don't know, 24 or 22, and then it's slated to go away. So if you've been on the bubble and you're thinking about doing this, remembering that there's like a six month lead time, you're probably gonna wanna think about getting on the calendar to take advantage of the biggest tax credit that you can. I would not be surprised to see those tax credits extended or at least the um, kind of go on a downward slope as opposed to just go to zero. I got some drone footage of what the panels look like on the roof. I'm gonna share that with you. And then I'm gonna take you outside and show you what the system looks like. I do have a referral code in the chat, in the comments below the description. If you find this video helpful, please like it, subscribe to the channel. I generally review things that are involved in an active lifestyle, hunting, fishing, outdoors equipment, solar, uh, kind of whatever strikes my fancy, frankly. Um, but if you can use that referral code, it won't cost you anything and it helps me and it helps me devote time to create content that is valuable to folks like you. Um, <clears throat> I think that's about it. I'll run you through. Now, you're going to need to know a couple things. They have to have an emergency shutoff switch uh, that is placed outside. It's a big switch and they generally it's easiest to place that right on the other side of the wall as your breaker box. So you're going to have a couple of constraints as to where you can place some of this equipment um, depending on where that switch is. Uh, you do have some flexibility where you put the batteries. I'm not really totally stoked about where my batteries landed so I'm actually talking to him right now about having them moved. We do have our master panel breaker out on the meter. Um, that serves the same purpose as that big huge em emergency shutoff switch. However, at least where I live, the code says I have to have this big honking switch. And basically it's so if EMS comes or your house is on fire and they need to kill power to the house because they're worried about what's happening with the solar system, they can do it at a moment's notice. So that has to be there. There's no two ways around it. We'll get you outside and show you what the system looks like. Um, make sure we show you that drone footage. And I'm happy to take questions. If you have them, put them in. So far, our experience has really been great. We'll see how they hold up over time. Panels have a 25-year warranty. Uh, the batteries are guaranteed, I think, to be at 70% of their initial efficiency in 10 years. That's something you want to be aware of. And also, I, depending on your, I don't, I'm not a home insurance specialist, but I did call our home insurance company and ask them if there's anything that I had to do. They said no, if it's attached to your house, it's included. Um, however, I did add a rider that upped some coverage just to make sure that I could rebuild it if something catastrophic happened. The, the solar panels are not subject to your regular home deductible generally. If you're, say you've got a $5,000 deductible or a $1,000 deductible on your type A coverage, I think they call it, there's also a separate section for your roof and that is subject to the hail and wind damage deductible. In my case, I can set that between three, two, and 1%. I have it set at 1%. The solar panels fall under that coverage. So if something goes wrong or a hailstorm comes and breaks three panels, I'm at 1% of my home value is my deductible. And I think these panels, if you break them down, they're about $800 each. So if I broke a couple, I would probably just be self-insuring. Um, but it's something that's good to know. So, you know, you have a little money knocked back in case something ever goes wrong. But these things are pretty robust. I got to look at them up close while they were putting them in. Again, installers did a great job. You've got a bunch of mounting options. Um, let's take you outside and show you what the thing looks like and um, go from there.
Okay, here we go. You see one power wall. That's about three and a half feet tall. There's power wall number two. You've got your inverter on the top here. Emergency shutoff switch. Now I've got these power walls outside on this wall, but I'm not really happy about it because this is a street facing wall. There's the door to the garage. So I'm gonna have them tuck these batteries into the garage and then just connect them that way. Remember, wherever you put these panels, you're gonna have this conduit that has to run two places. One, up to your roof line to connect to your actual panels. And then your other conduit is gonna to have to run over here to your control center. This is the um, inverter, I believe. Power wall, power wall. I don't know if this may be the brains of the operation. It has to sit right here. And then here's that emergency shutoff switch I was telling you about. Here's my hand, just to give you a little scale. It's pretty big. And then this is the junction box they use to route the wires in and out. Directly behind this are holes drilled right through the masonry that connect to my breaker box. My breaker box is in a master closet for whatever reason. Um, so I really didn't have much choice as to where to put this. So you've got that box, which I can paint, uh, service disconnect, which I can paint. You cannot paint the Tesla frontage on these uh, Tesla, on the Tesla manufactured equipment. It will void all your warranty. I mean, if I had a white Uber modern house, I wouldn't mind so much, but the house looks a little more traditional, so they don't blend in quite as much as I would have liked, but I can live with this much equipment on the front. Step back a little bit. It's the, the, the panel or the uh, power wall and the inverter and then the power wall number two um, kind of looks like a refrigerator stuck to the side of my house. So like I said, I'm in the process of having that relocated. The conduit you can paint uh, so it'll hopefully blend in and won't be quite an eyesore. They do put a pretty significant grounding rod in the ground. So they come out, do the installation. It took two days and was pretty seamless. Then you have to have an inspection done that inspection only took a couple days then you need to get permission to operate from your utility which enables you to um, start to sell power back to the grid and i do it via net metering my meter is over behind me on that power pole way over there pretty clean installation it looks good it does have a real industrial look to it like i said if you have a modern house you might not mind if these things are on the outside but um, in the case of my house, I'm not super stoked that they're there. I did already plant this little hedgerow, so these are supposed to get four feet high. So worst case scenario, if these batteries stay where they are, then um, at least I can uh, hopefully cover them up with the hedgerow. My plan is to run conduit down the front of the house over to that garage. These things do have an on-off switch. Uh, never probably need to use it. They do have these little snazzy green LEDs, I guess, that glow when it's being charged. These are just little blade panels that are plastic. You can pop those off if you need to see your serial number. Um, you can date your you can date these or at least understand what model you have based on the numbers in that in that serial number. And that's pretty much the whole kit and caboodle. Now, this bothered me a little bit. Um, talk about the ultimate ding dong ditch. This uh, switch doesn't just kill the solar, it kills everything. It turns everything off to the entire house. I just envisioned some kid out looking for fun, looking for laughs, comes and pulls this, this lever on me in the middle of the night. It's notched out here at the bottom, so you could lock it in the off position. However, there isn't a corresponding way to lock it in the top. Um, the idea is though that EMS could turn the system off if they came to the house in an emergency uh, for safety reasons, even though that switch is basically replicated on my master panel over at the meter, I imagine I could put a uh, padlock on that on the box at the meter, and that's why they mandate that I have this switch that is not lockable. Um, the guys do a really good job. They listen to your desires about where you want stuff. You can work with the designer. It, the turnaround time is not fast. It's pretty slow but it's just because they're trying to work through so many people um, who want their product, right? Uh, so just be patient and work with them and you'll get what you want in the end. You just have to wait a while and be patient to do it. 
you can finance in-house through Tesla or you can pay cash, whatever you prefer to do, or you can finance it through a third-party lender if that's your preference. Um, I've got this figured out to where for me it's going to be about a 10-year break even. That was kind of my sweet spot. I did not want to get involved in uh, like a 20-year time horizon was just too long for me. 10 years seemed to be the sweet spot, and that's what this system got me. So that's the outside equipment, pretty uh, straightforward, not a lot to it, zero maintenance. Once it's in place, it starts doing its thing, and all you have to do is look at your app and enjoy your self-generated power. All right, so that's pretty much it. You've seen the whole deal from the app. I'll show you that again. Let's see what we're doing. Okay, now we're generating 6.3 kilowatts of power. The house is using 0.8, and the solar, uh, the power walls are being charged. Generally on a sunny day, pretty much the, the power walls, to charge two of them, we're done by about noontime or one-ish. Uh, once they're full, you can sell your energy back to the grid. You will make it overnight for sure, or pretty close, even running air conditioning on, based on the parameters I gave you earlier for the size of this house. If we turned off the HVAC system and were to just be running refrigerator, freezer, uh, lights, charging our phones, etc., we should make it certainly at least 48 hours. Um, Given the fact that there isn't a storm imminent, we generally run this thing so that it utilizes all our stored energy every night to minimize our reliance on the grid. Pretty happy with the system. Uh, installation was professional. Only downside is that it took about six months for it to get here. Um, but overall, we're super happy. It's exciting. Um, we're self-reliant and uh, teach my daughter that you can make energy without making pollution is a pretty cool thing. These guys really have it figured out. This thing is dialed in. If you like the video, please like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to have other content delivered to you. And don't forget the referral code right down below. It costs you nothing, but it helps me. And I really appreciate that because it helps me justify uh, taking the time to make these videos to help make informed consumers. If you have questions, again, drop them down in the chat. I generally try to respond to everything that is put in the chat, even if that means telling you that I don't know the answer. Um, have a great day. Bye.